I'm Jeff Barnard, I'm co-chair of Greening Stenning. Um, Greening Stenning got started in 2010 and um, for the first 10 years we were running a whole series of different projects on different green issues all around climate change here in Stenning. But in early 2020 we had our 10th anniversary and we were looking back and thinking well you know we've, do we've done lots, we've got a, you know, a big following, we've got a good mailing list of nearly a thousand people. Um, but what have we really achieved? You know, the climate crisis is right upon us and um, we were really having a bit of a soul searching there about um, should we be raising our sights and at that meeting at the football club in, in January 2020 I kind of asked people should we, be, should we be kind of being more ambitious, should we be going further and the, everybody put their hand up to say yes let's do it and um, so we, we kind of resolved to kind of raise our ambition in a big way and thinking of 2030 as being like the, the time span we've got to really get things going by. Um, needless to say, what happened in, in spring that year? Covid hit. So we had to kind of ramp things down just as we we're about to try and ramp things up. But after a couple of months, I think people were kind of reflecting on this a lot and we thought, how can we, what can we do during lockdown to actually get this issue into people's minds? And we came up with the idea of running an online survey and we called it the 2030 Vision Survey. And we asked people what would they like Stenning, Bramber and Beeding, which is our, our patch, to be like in 2030. And the way we did it, we set out 40 different ideas um, on transport, on energy, on biodiversity, on a range of things. Um, and we asked them, do you, think it's a, do you think it's a good idea, for example, that many more houses should have solar panels? Do you think it's a good idea we should be trying to calm the traffic in the high street? Um, lots of questions like that. And um, we got a really good response. I think it hit the moment in lockdown where people were reflecting more about the future and what they wanted the future to be. Um, and um, we, must, we got over 450 responses to this. And not the good thing was it wasn't just our regular punters. It was actually a broader group. And it was really encouraging because it showed there was a very widespread concern about the environment and a real desire to make things different and um, from this there was um, a kind of an, a vision emerged which we've called our 2030 vision of what um, what we want this area to be like in 2030 and I'll just read you out some of the main elements to it the six pieces to it um, we have clean air and quiet roads thanks to improved cycle paths and buses and a big shift to electric cars Zero carbon building and retrofitting mean we live in warm and energy efficient homes. We're producing clean, renewable energy at scale, locally. Farmers, councils and local people are working to protect and enhance nature. We have thriving businesses and more people shop locally. More is repaired and recycled and less wasted. And we have a strong and cohesive community that looks after vulnerable people. So it's been an exciting journey and it's, it's um, a year and a half on, um, we've, we've actually I think made some real progress but we've had some real challenges, not least lockdown. So um, we've been having to do a lot more online than we expected but now that things are easing we're able to get out and things are starting to ramp up. So um, if you, I'd like to show you some of the projects we've been doing, um, give, you, give you a flavour of what's been happening. So here we are down in, in Abbey Road in, in Stenning. Now, we're really lucky where we are to live in such a, a wildlife rich and beautiful area. And people are very concerned to try and protect this and preserve it, enhance it even, given all the threats from climate change and species loss. So our biodiversity action group has been thinking how it can do its bit to try and make that happen. One of the things we thought would be useful would be to start by understanding what it is we have around us, because people take it for granted so often. So we can, we've set out in the first year to do a habitat survey to spot where the local biodiversity hotspots were. And that's now been completed. And this, for example, is one of them. This is part of a nature corridor that stretches all the way from Stenning Church up there in the Stenning Centre, right the way through the town to the bypass below. And this is a really nature-rich wetland area right here in Abbey Road. And we've, we've mapped this 
And um, just recently, we've, we've converted all this data from the map uh, onto an online map you can look at, and you can zoom in and see what's where. So from the map, you can see where the different community orchards are in the, in the town. There's one just here, for example. And you can zoom out and see the bigger picture. But the whole point of it is to get people to appreciate what we have now, so we can hang on to it. We've also been working with the local parish councils and the county council on trying to protect our local verges and encourage pollinators. We call it Life on the Verge, this project. Here's one of the sites in Upper Beeding where we've protected this, this uh, bit of grass from being cut. And lo and behold, within the first year, we've already got orchids appearing. One of the things that's really helped us is we, we managed to get a grant from Horsham District Council from their Community Climate Fund. And this has been supporting all of our work, which has really made a difference. On the lifestyle agenda, a couple of things are the main items. One of them is a collection um, point at our farmer's market for hard to recycle plastics. So people bring all their milk bottle tops and other things there once a month to collect and be recycled. The other thing which has been really successful is our repair cafe, which we hold month, once a month here at Beeding and Bramber Village Hall. And that has been a really wonderful event, bringing people of all kind of shapes and sizes and persuasions together to actually um, fix things rather than throwing them away. But a nice touch is that um, next week, next Saturday, we're holding one of these and for the first time it's going to be solar powered because we've been helping the uh, village hall here fundraise to put solar panels and a battery system on the village hall. So that makes a great story and it's an example of how a local village property, a kind of a hall, can be a sort of a centrepiece showing what the future can look like. So on the transport front, the, the big idea has been to try and encourage more active travel, to get people out of their cars, onto bikes and, and uh, onto buses. And the, focus, the main focus for the first year has been a campaign to introduce a 20 mile an hour zone in Stenning for the whole of the village. And this has been a really good example of collaboration because the idea first started with the parish council but they brought in different stakeholders including the district and the county and other community groups and Greening Stenning kind of has been a big part of this and we ran a big survey testing attitudes to this and we showed that the local population, although it's not unanimous, there was a two to one kind of majority in favour of introducing this 20 mile an hour zone and here on Clays Hill which is one of the main entrances to Stenning this is one of the main areas we need it because people come off the bypass steaming up here and if they could just slow down at this point to 20 it would make such a difference to the whole feel of the town it would feel safer for kids out there on bikes safer for people on the on the pavements so this has all gone through and it's got it's now in the hands of west sussex county council and their engineers will be here to sort of to design a scheme which we hope will be coming into force next year one of the things we realised from the outset is that we couldn't do this alone. So we made a big point of reaching out to local groups in the area to try and join forces. So we've been speaking to all of the parish councils, that's, that's, that's Stenning, Bramber and Upper Beeding, but also the schools who are really kind of into this subject now, and the preschools who are equally enthusiastic. But we've also been talking to different, um, different other community groups here, there's different wildlife groups in, in the town. Um, but also local businesses on the high street who are really seriously into these issues and want to do better. So it's been a team effort and that is the kind of story of, of, the, of has to be the key to the success here. Now we feel people are really right behind this and there's really good evidence of this was that with, was with the climate march. That ended up here in Bramber Castle. It was a really great day. We had, we had a group, one group started in Stenning by the Stenning Centre and walked here. Another group started in Bramber at the playing field and they converged just down here and came up and we had a big rally. And there must have been 400, 450 people here, people of all ages. And it really just shows that people do care about these climate issues. And the big message was, we need action and we need it now. And as you hear from the song, that comes through loud and clear. I think the 
thing that's made it work here is actually tapping in to the enthusiasm of the enthusiasts. And with any community, you'll have folks who are really actually um, energised by this, actually really alarmed by climate issues and wanting to do something. And I think it's unlocking the energy of those people and enabling those people to actually make a difference. That's what parish councils can do. And they can actually support them, enable them, facilitate them and unlock that, um, that energy and that get up and go and that fire in the belly which is needed to tackle this problem. But I think the big thing that has really mattered is actually those partnerships we've built and a particular word for parish councils. I think they can play a really crucial role and it's, it's partly in, in leading and showing that this, this issue really matters and they're doing something about it but they've also got a big part to play in convening different groups around from the place, bringing them together and also enabling because parish councils kind of know how things work and they know who to speak to at the county or at the district. So I think they have a a, a very important role, part to play in sort of facilitating this whole awakening about the need for climate action.